Hi, I'm Matt Salmon, former U.S. Congressman and current President of the Electronic Cigarette Association. During my life, I've had a great deal of thought about the topic of smoking. I don't smoke myself, and I believe that people have the right to smoke. But I've watched a family member smoke lifelong and watched him struggle with quitting and ultimately watched the resulting emphysema and cancer. Our country has reduced the incidence of tobacco smoking from 45 percent of adults in 1965 to 21 percent today through legislation, education, and marketing restrictions. Some years ago, I helped push through a new law in the state of Arizona that was among the first public health smoking bans. Later in 2000, I was named Congressman of the Year by the American Cancer Society. Despite gallant efforts by many good organizations and people, including some of my own, the reality is a lot of people, 45.8 million in the U.S. to be exact, still smoke tobacco. What this tells me, and what it should tell you, is that the two options that smokers have had for a very long time, the option of continuing to smoke tobacco at certain peril, and the option to quit smoking altogether, are simply not enough to address consumer needs and to improve public health. To that end, for the past few years, I followed a revolutionary new idea called electronic cigarettes. A board-certified physician named Dr. David Barron, who has been the chief of staff at the UCLA Medical Center, says that he has never seen a product, ever, that stands to save as many lives as electronic cigarettes. If you haven't seen an electronic cigarette before, here's what one looks like. It is battery-powered and looks like a cigarette. Hundreds of thousands of people around the country using them say they feel and taste like a cigarette, too. Because they aren't ignited, electronic cigarettes don't produce secondhand smoke or lingering acrid odor. The vapor they emit contains only 20 ingredients, all of which are considered safe for human consumption, including nicotine. Whereas tobacco smoke contains 4,000 ingredients, including arsenic and carbon monoxide and dozens of ingredients that cause cancer. In short, electronic cigarettes are a significantly better alternative to tobacco smoking. As Dr. Joel Nitzkin, a nationally recognized public health physician says, on the basis of available research data, electronic cigarettes promise risk of illness and death well under 1% of the risk posed by tobacco cigarettes. Or, as David Sweener, a global harm reduction expert, has said, anyone who thinks tobacco cigarettes are no more hazardous than electronic cigarettes should take a remedial course in basic sciences. You're sure to hear a great deal of buzz about electronic cigarettes. Some will be mistruths from abolitionists or from those whose perilous or ineffective products and market share will be jeopardized. Others will seek a safe harbor through the interpretation of law or the hand of regulation. I suppose competition in this form is to be expected. Whatever is said, remember this. Withholding electronic cigarettes from the market is like telling someone who chooses to smoke that his or her only legal option is to smoke tobacco which is the leading form of preventable death in the United States and is responsible for 400,000 deaths per year, more than AIDS, drugs, homicides, fires, and auto accidents combined. So whether you smoke or not, I know you recognize that the message is wrong and it cannot be a good thing. Finally, I wish I could share with you today the enormous outpouring and steady stream of stories we hear from people who use electronic cigarettes. You would hear statements like, thank you, you saved my life. Where have you been all this time? I feel better than ever. Almost universally, these are the words of longtime middle-aged tobacco smokers who have not been able to or willing to quit, but who are feeling the ravages of tobacco smoking and who are seeking a better alternative. My job as the president of the Electronic Cigarette Association is to help establish the industry's standards of good practice. As our dynamic and budding industry works toward that goal, we realize that harm reduction approaches in public health, like electronic cigarettes, will be criticized for condoning activity some have spent careers trying to eliminate. But since one in five U.S. adults smoke tobacco, and smoking cessation products have a 95% failure rate, it seems patently obvious that new products and innovative approaches beyond those already tried are very much needed now. With that in mind, I hope you will join me and the many companies in good standing in our industry by thinking first of the needs of consumers over special interests, by putting public health ahead of stifling process, and by embracing the first true innovation in a centuries-old space. Thank you. 
And if you'd like to share your thoughts with me, I would welcome them at salmonbetterway at gmail.com. That's S-A-L-M-O-N-B-E-T-T-E-R-W-A-Y at gmail.com. Thank you.